Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to another episode of Reverts Reality. My name is Nahela Morales, and I'm here with my co-host, Sister Arenda Datka. Today we have a fun, interesting uh, Reverts Reality, which is uh, episode 28. Um, we've done different polls on the following, which is what not to ask a convert, revert, first generation Muslim. And so um, we're going to be discussing that today. And, and it's very important to take it serious because this was a poll. So it was um, converts, reverts from all across the, uh, the globe. And alhamdulillah, we were able to um, get these questions. So if you have any questions that you don't like to be asked or you're tired of answering, because honestly, how many times can we share our revert story? I mean, I sometimes feel like carrying a little piece of paper. I don't know if it happens to you, Sister Renda, or just, you know, here it is. Um, but it, it gets tired some, not only that, but um, for some of us, we may have a darker past than others. And so to be uh, repeating all of that after knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven you for all your sins, uh, it's it, it can take a toll on a person. And so I know people don't mean, um, you know, it's not bad intended or what have you, but it does get tiresome. Wouldn't you agree, Sister Renda? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, like you said, I don't think anybody has a bad intention towards it when they're asking, but they probably don't realize also that pretty much everyone you meet that finds out that you embraced Islam and you converted to that faith that they're asking you the same question. That can be a lot of people. So um, yeah, and not not a bad intention at all. It's just something we get asked often. And sometimes we have to use our critical thinking and, and think a little deeper in terms of, um, you know, this person dropped everything in their life to come to Islam. And maybe they were doing things that Islam forbids, but they don't really want to bring that out. And I know in, uh, our faith teaches us not to bring out a sin if it's not known, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you know, those sins are what bring us the understanding and the realization and um, reflection on our lives. And that kind of leads us in that direction um, because we've had experiences like that. And so, you know, you don't want to always review that. <laughs> So definitely. And also, we are much more than just our story, right? right? I mean, throughout the years, we have evolved, we 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 change. And so therefore, you know, ask us how our day is. Ask us, I don't know, if uh, we've uh, learned how to pray or where are we in our dean. I mean, there's so much more to us um, than just our revert story. And well, it, some stories are very fascinating. And I always say this, own your story because it can inspire somebody. But with that said, you share whatever you are comfortable with. No more, no less. If you just want to stop at the day you took Shahada and just from there onwards, uh, we have to be very respectful of that and not, you know, dig in like, but what was your life like? Because if they're not saying or if we're not sharing that, it's for a reason. And so we have to learn to respect one another's uh, opinions and the way we share whatever we desire to share, right? Absolutely. And uh, just to the viewers that are on here, I know Sister Nahela and I are the sisters on today. We don't have any brothers. So I know there's a lot of questions we'll go over that mostly sisters get this these questions. But if any of you brothers are watching, please chime in if you get any, have had any of these experiences as well, put it in the comments so we can read that out loud as well. Absolutely. You want to start? Yes. Yeah, so I think one of the biggest questions that I get since 26 years ago is when I meet another Muslim and they see me, I'm, I, I wear this everywhere, my hijab. And they look at me and I speak perfect English and they say, oh, where are you from? I say, I'm American. Yeah, but where are you from before that? Where, where you know, did you move from somewhere? No. Where's your parents from, um, America? Where's your grandparents from? <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to go all the way back. And I'm like, um, well, if you go really far back, maybe in Europe or Polish or somewhere like that, Germany, um, so they get really so surprised. And then after that, the next question that comes, first of all, where are you from? 
Uh-huh. Second of all, um, uh, oh gosh, I just forgot the question now. Well, um, one that the one that I get, uh, yeah, yeah. like that comes on the top of my head is um, your husband is um, is Arab, and yes. I'm a single woman, right? And so I'm like, I'm not married. And then, you know, oh, so you're like, they don't know where to go from there because it (laughs) almost seems as if we don't have the capability to actually think and research and study on our own. And so I get that very, I I get that a lot. Like, where's your husband from? Well, I don't have a husband. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And that, and that kind of like insults my intelligence sometimes because um, like before when I say, where are you from? And then they'll say, oh, you're Muslim. Well, no, this is just a fashion statement. (laughs) You know, this is the new fashion here in America. So that that's surprising to me because they're Muslim, number one. Right. And then when I I recognize they're Muslim, then I say, Assalamu alaikum. Oh, you know that. And then they might speak in Arabic. And I say, no, I don't speak all Arabic. Sorry, just a few little things. (laughs) But yeah, the next question is, where's your husband from? Right. That is the most common questions. And I hesitate to answer because I didn't convert for my husband Hmm. and that's the assumption all the time and it's very frustrating it's not only from the Muslim community it's also from the non-Muslim community but um yeah definitely that is the one thing that you know they say oh I say where he's from and they're like oh like that's why you're Muslim no, right. that's not why I have a brain I have you know I, I utilize critical thinking I've done a lot of research and this is the path I chose so <laughs> that's definitely one question that is very frustrating to get yeah for sure for sure um the um just trying to share out here so people can join the conversation like sister Renda said um, if you have any of your experiences that you would like us to read on here t- t- today, um, we're, we're more than happy to share them and um, maybe uh, that will help also. So other, so our viewers, because a lot of our viewers are also um, born Muslims um, and therefore they may not have an idea. So it's, it's a fun conversation today, but also we want to utilize it being educational for both, right? Um, and so that, that's important too. Um, another question that I, uh, that I often get, um, because I am a Mexican and I speak Spanish, you know, when, when I speak Spanish, they are not able to, uh, synchronize the Muslim, uh, identity, the hijab or the headscarf with me speaking Spanish. And that just blows them away. I mean, I think 10 years ago was a little bit more, um surprising i mean today i think it's just as surprising if you go to like rural areas where there's not they haven't seen muslims and then to see a mexican muslim or someone speaking spanish or helping them um i i've stepped in when somebody doesn't speak english for to to translate and as i'm translating or i'm trying to tell the person okay so tell me what do you want me to tell them they're just like looking at me like oh (laughs) Oh, like, (laughs) so, um, and it's a perfect opportunity. I see it now as a perfect opportunity for Dawa, right? It gives us the opportunity to give Dawa. And similar to to your experience, um, I remember one time I was in New York City and I asked, uh, I came out of the bus and there was a a little stand and the brother saw me and um, he said, Salam Alaikum. And I said, Walaikum Salam. So I felt safe to ask him, um, I was by myself, so I felt safe to ask him to take a picture um, there. Uh, and so he took the picture. He gave me salams, and then he asked me, "You're Muslim?" And I was like, "Yes." Uh, oh, after he uh, before he asked me where was I from as well, and I said Mexico. And he said, "You're Muslim?" And I was like, uh, "You just gave me salams." Yes, I'm <laughs> Muslim. But um, it's so difficult for for them to uh, in sync everything together, right? Yeah, I think. I mean, you know, some. It, it just depends. I think on the 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 nationality of the people where they grew up. You know, we tend to think that everybody's grouped in one category, and so. 
um, a lot of Muslims who aren't as uh, maybe active in the community or active in learning, um, they, they have just this idea that they're shocked when they see people from other nationalities that are Muslim, right? Because we have such a big uh, diverse community of, of converts. And so, um, you know, it's, it's really cool to see that diversity because we have people from all over the world that have embraced Islam. And what a lot of the born Muslims don't really take into consideration that ask these kind of questions is that every one of us that come through this genuine, you know, we're genuinely intelligent, most of us. If we're, do if we're doing the conversion for the right reason, we're looking for the those answers and we're using our critical thinking. It's not just that we're following the average, you know, political opinion or the, the, the atmosphere we're in or whatever, or we're not just following whatever has been told on the news or we're not, you know, we're really thinking about it and we're researching it and we're doing our due diligence and we're focusing on learning and understanding the root of what Islam teaches. And so I think a lot of the times when, um, you know, these people ask questions, these other Muslims, they're not really taking that into consideration that most of us didn't just decide to go and embrace Islam, right? We did a lot of homework on it. And um, I think a lot of the times we don't get that credit that vibe, <laughs> right? Or credit, right? Yeah, As, or credit. Yeah, like um, somebody asked, what are we talking about? So today we're talking about what not to ask a convert or a revert. And we have a brother that says one question that he hates is how many wives does he have? As <laughs> if everybody, uh, you know, uh, practices uh, polygyny. So subhanAllah, that's, um, yeah, send us your, the questions that you don't like if you're a, a revert convert that's watching today and, and we'll read them out. Um, but um, uh, another question that I, I, I get often asked is obviously the family aspect of it, right? Did your family accept it? And, and I think that's, that's important. Um, and, and I like to express that aspect of my journey because I think it, it allows people to see how it can be difficult at times for a convert, a revert upon embracing Islam. And so we are struggling with our families and we're struggling with community and we're struggling with our own identity. And so for it to be questioned over and over and over, or for us to work so hard uh, to be categorized as Muslim, you know, I mean, like, I remember I gave a talk at the ICNA convention and I said, you know, when do I just become a Muslim? Like, when does the revert and the convert and the new Muslim, new, like, what, first generation, when does that fall off my name, right? Yeah. Um, and so um, I remember one brother said, you know, to own it and to, and to be very proud of it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided us. So that, that kind of went away. But, but it's true. We, we, and I hear this, this a lot, even within our Embrace family, right? And we have different chapters that our Islam is often questioned. Um, and, and what that means, or what we mean is basically, you know, um, the question of why did you convert? You know, um, who did you convert for? Uh, how long have you been Muslim? Um, and then if you haven't been Muslim a significant amount of time, it's almost as if you're not Muslim enough or if you're not in your journey, I mean, each journey is different, right? Some brothers uh, adapt the, the beer right away. Some brothers don't have facial hair and so it doesn't grow. Or some brothers decide that that's their journey and they, they haven't gone there the similar way as sisters. Some sisters don't always like wear the hijab um, from the day they take their shahada. It's a process, right? And, and it doesn't happen overnight. And, and um, I think in my lifetime, I've met two sisters that the day they took Shahada, they put on the hijab and never took it off, mashallah. Mm -hmm. um, but for all of us, it, it's a journey. And, and, and therefore, just because you're not wearing hijab doesn't make you less of a Muslim, right? Um, let's see, Brother Kenneth, my favorite question is, where are you from? I say here, 
um, well, where are your parents from? Here. Are you Muslim? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the common question, right, for us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, subhanAllah. But that um, that is, um, I already answered that. Look in the comments, Brother uh, Bilal. We're talking about uh, what not to ask a convert or a revert. Uh, let's see. Oh, I have one here from Sis, uh, Sister Charity says, uh, Assalamu alaikum. I get asked if my husband's Muslim. And when I say no, then I have to explain that I converted after marriage. And then I, I get asked why I don't divorce him and marry a Muslim man. So there's a lot of, you know, when you have converts coming to Islam, somehow Allah guided them. Right. And there's going to be a lot of different aspects of their life that they're going to have to process through. And just like Sister Nahela said, it's a journey. Right. You're not going to change everything overnight or within a month or not, you know, whatnot. So there is a lot of things that people have to real, realize this is a this is between you and your creator, you and Allah. And that's one of the things that a lot of the converts loved when they came to Islam is that relationship is between you and your maker. That's it, not between people. And so when we recognize that, we take away those judgments and those criticisms. And we take away the questions that are might be a little condescending or, or challenge you as a, a Muslim. And that might be a journey that you're on, no matter what that you know entails. So um, I think it's really important when we meet other converts, the reason we feel more comfortable is because we understand that concept that we're all at a different level and we're all working to get better and we're all working to implement and make Allah happy, but that's going to take time and different time for each person. So absolutely. Another definitely. question from our poll was a sister says, you know, I get asked if my kids are Muslim. You know, even though like my kids were born into the religion. And so um, she says it gets annoying. Yes, my kids are Muslim. Uh, the other one is for those that do uh, adopt a Muslim name. Um, did you change your name? Um, or why is this your name? Uh, and so I get that like what is your real name? And my real name is Nahela. It just, it just <laughs> kind of happens to be Nahela. Allah had a plan for me all along. And therefore my name is Nahela. I did not change it. And then I get the question uh, about my son. Why isn't my son's name Muhammad or Ahmed? Why is it Andrew? Well, I loved Andrew and there's nothing wrong with his name. Therefore there's no need to change it. And so understanding all of this and, and like you were saying you know a lot of our community members a lot of our born muslim uh, brothers and sisters they're more culturally geared and when they come here or or what have you they're um they only know you know everybody having a muslim name um and so it becomes kind of difficult to understand that uh that aspect of it yeah, absolutely. It, it can be it can be a definite challenge to go through. And I think uh, going back to just remembering that no matter what questions get thrown at us, um, the intention is not ill. Sometimes they're just ignorant. <laughs> sometimes, right? Or sometimes they're just curious and they don't think before they ask. Right. Um, Right. You know, and so our, our show here is not to to criticize or to put down, but to let people know these are issues that we face every day and across the board with converts um, and reverts and first generation Muslims. So we're just letting people know because sometimes if you don't know, you don't know to change it. Right? right. And these things, just recognizing these things can help that convert feel more comfortable in the community because just as sister Nahela said, we leave so many things behind when we embrace Islam, you know, on that journey, you're dropping a lot of things, you know, if whatever you're doing in your life doesn't coincide with Quran and Sunnah, most of us are like, Zoop, out the door, Zoop, out the door. Yeah. And then a lot of our community members, like you said, um, have that cultural um, aspect behind them and not so much realizing it until it's it's you know recognized but you really see that difference between a cultural islam and islam 
And so that's where we, we get these, these issues when we get questions and all that. So definitely our, our goal here is to bring up these things and then um, let people know. So, you know, you can think next time before when you meet a convert, um, you know, for me, 26 years being a Muslim. And now, like you said, when does that, that title fall off? It doesn't really fall off because when they ask, where's your parents from? If I say I'm from America, then they say, where are your parents from? Well, they're American. So then it goes, of course, you're a convert. And then they say, oh, um, do you uh, know how to pray? Well, I've been Muslim for 26 years. <laughs> Inshallah, I know how to pray <laughs> because it's been a long time, right? So it's just making these assumptions that aren't really questions that need to be asked, right? right. If it's something like, oh, you know, that's great. Alhamdulillah, you became Muslim. Did you find it hard to learn how to pray? That would mm -hmm. be a good question, right? Or yes. have you mastered the prayer? Um, did you, did you have a hard time learning it in Arabic? Because a lot of us learn it in English first mm -hmm. and then learn it in Arabic. And sometimes it can take a very long time to learn it in Arabic. Uh, some people have amazing memories and people like me, you have to repeat it a thousand times before you remember a few words. So, you know, again, it's, it's an individual journey. So, yeah, absolutely. We have sister Diana saying, so. Uh, this is her questions. Uh, so did you become Muslim after marriage? How, how come your family isn't Muslim? Uh, you are Muslim, but how, but how if you are Mexican? So that whole intercultural or racial or um, demographic um, becomes, uh, you know, especially for people that have never met, you know, a, a convert, uh, let alone a convert, forget, forget Mexican, but just the convert. <laughs> Some people, you know, um, have not. And um, the other day, uh, actually about a month ago, uh, I went to this Iraqi restaurant, right? And I always make it a point to speak Spanish if I can identify someone being a Latino or Hispanic. Um, and so I, I make it a point. That's like my Dawa point and kind of like, hey, we're here. And, you know, and I always joke around, do they treat you well? How are your bosses? And, you know, um, and I'm your advocate here. And, and, and I make some type of connection with them. And um, I always ask them, have, have they ever spoken to you about Islam? Um, do you have any questions? You know, and I oftentimes leave my number. And this one time she's been working there 11 years. And I was very, very surprised. And she said they've never spoken to her about Islam. And so that's another thing I wanted to bring up today, that it's very important for us to um to be vocal. I mean, that's our responsibility to convey the message uh, of Islam to everybody that we come across. It. And it, obviously, we're not trying to convert. Uh, there's no compulsion in religion. We understand all of that, but we leave little seeds, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes care of hidayah, of guidance. And so it's important for us to do our part. And, um, and it gives, it, it opens a door, I think. It opens a door to people understanding that, you know, Muslims is not only um, geared or, or it doesn't only solely belong to Arabs um, or the Daisy community or what have you, or whoever they're, they're, they come across, you know, anyone can be Muslim. And I think that's very important for us to make sure that we, uh, are vocal about it uh, and um, make connection. I mean, Allah tells us, right, that he created us into nations and tribes to get to know one another. And that should be on an on every day, every platform, every opportunity we actually um, get, inshallah. Absolutely. And um, I know a lot, I don't know if you get these questions, but uh, a lot of the times I get a questions about my family or maybe times that I go back to visit my family. And, and it depends on the person asking the question, because sometimes you'll meet Muslims who are very strict in their faith. Sometimes mm -hmm. you'll meet people who are just, you know, so-so in the middle. And sometimes you'll meet some that are just kind of far away from the faith, mm -hmm. but they're Muslim. You know, they, they, they identify as Muslim, but maybe they're not practicing as much. And so, um, you know, it depends on that person that's asking the question, but 
I know um, on the on the stricter end, you know, they'll say, oh, you still go to your family's house during um, Christmas time, for instance. Um, a lot of the times that's when people have off from work or off from school. So that is the time where you, if you live far from your family or even close, it's a time to get together, not necessarily meaning you're celebrating Christmas, right? Because we don't celebrate Christmas, but um, I think there's a lot of judgmental in that, um, that there's some schools of thoughts who think you shouldn't even have any connection with the family if they're not Muslim, right? Because you're putting yourself in a, in a tight spot um, Islamically, but that's, you know, that's not the case. And so I know I get a lot, I've gotten a lot of questions about that because I used to visit once a year to my parents um, and they were always very curious about about that because there was no one Muslim where I would go to visit for like a month. And so how, well, how do you um, practice then? Well, we still do our prayers. I actually pack all my meat because I eat Zabiya halal. I pack it, I freeze it, I go to the ice uh, company and buy dry ice and I drive to my parents with all of this meat for the month and we cook that. So there's ways to adjust your life and to keep your faith in there and to still be a good Muslim, just do what Islam teaches. And maybe your family, inshallah, will see the beauty in that, just like my mom did. You know, it took 25 years, but she converted to Islam after, you know, at the age of 74. And so, you know, we always have to remember some people think that we need to stay away from our friends and family after we convert but that's not necessarily the case but as long as you're keeping your islam strong that's going to show that's like like you said sister nahela that's a dawah that's not telling people my faith is the best that's acting as if it's the best and acting as the best person you can so right i know that was one question i get yeah so then we have um brother rashid saying mashallah i get that sometimes too because my wife is not muslim and mm -hmm. so i've met i've met um i've met subhanallah there was one couple and I, I like to share this story and perhaps she's even watching subhanallah but this beautiful family in new jersey and i won't say names but um subhanallah she has two sons and her sons converted um and um and she converted the mother and the sons got married. And so their family started growing grandkids. And so you have, you know, two daughter-in-laws, your son, they're Muslim, the grandchildren, but the husband had not converted. And so a lot of people gave her beef, uh, but there was one very wise scholar that, you know, uh, told her, do you think that he would eventually convert? You know, and obviously when I met him, subhanAllah, uh, because she's a seamstress. So he used to come and drop off all my abayas. Uh, he always greeted me with salam. So I was under the impression that the entire family converted, subhanAllah. <laughs> and um, I had no idea that the husband was not Muslim. And he was very proper, very good manners, Islamic manners. Um, he went to all the events. So obviously like we thought he was Muslim and the day that um, he embraced Islam like, and then they announced it, I was so shocked. I was like, oh, subhanAllah. <laughs> I had no idea he was not Muslim because he was practicing the faith, subhanAllah, even better than some of us. And so um, it took a, a, a number of years before he embraced Islam. I mean, similar to your mom, uh, you know, 24, 25 years you know, nine, 10 years, I think it took around there for them. And subhanAllah, I mean, we just have to be patient, diligent, consistent. And obviously our manners have to be intact and they have to see some type of change. And that's what I tell a lot of the reverts, you know, just be patient. Um, any one of us would get very upset or scared not knowing what our child converted into, especially if we don't know anything about this new way of life or faith or religion, uh, cult, as I remember one time, uh, my cousin said, you converted into a cult. I'm like, no, not a cult. <laughs> but um, this is all misconceptions, right? And, and, and it's, it's time that clears them up. It's you obtaining knowledge as well you learning about your faith, being able to answer these questions. Um, so Sister Sherry said, you should ask them back 
do you know how to pray? <laughs> you know, and we do get asked that. Um, I have another funny story. I was going to Hajj, right, uh, a couple years ago. And I was leaving out of LAX, Los Angeles. And um, there was two flights. There was one going to Medina, the one we were going to board. And then there was one going to Guadalajara, Mexico. And I decided to wear my abaya that said Mexico. So, so confusing, right? Like this abaya that said Mexico, hijab. <laughs> so where do I belong? And subhanAllah, like uh, my son and I prayed, um, you know, duhar and asar. And, um, and obviously all, all the, our fellow brothers and sisters were praying. Um, and so when it was time to line up, uh, I decided to ask a gentleman in Spanish from the other um, gate to take a picture of my son and I. And obviously he was shocked. And, um, and he said, you know, who are the, like, what are all these people? Where, where are they going? Where's Medina? And so we sparked a small conversation. I got in line and then the sister in front of me turned around and she asked me if I was Muslim. <laughs> the one going to Hajj. And I was like, um, yeah, I just prayed. I'm going on this flight and I'm dressed this way. So sometimes we, uh, we have to use a little bit of, you know, a common sense and perhaps even a little bit of hikmah, you know, a little bit of wisdom uh, before we even ask, right? Or think, a uh, thing before you ask. Um, yeah. And um, the other thing is, I mean, I want to use the, the rest of the time, perhaps, if, if, do you have any other questions that they asked you? If not, we can give some suggestions of what they should ask a Muslim. Yeah, uh, a yeah. Yeah. I think, I think the only other one I was going to mention was, um, do you get questions yourself? Because I know me, I've adopted different styles over the years as my knowledge grew. Um, in the beginning, I was wearing only abayas and, um, you know, uh, so it's just adjust, adjusted over the years based on my comfort or my understanding because I thought I had to dress a certain way or wear this one thing and not understanding that it's just the modesty that there's certain things that you have to adhere to and as long as you're doing that you know we see all over the world people have different styles right different yeah. and especially mm -hmm. sisters and brothers um, that they're wearing it doesn't mean if you're a brother and you convert to Islam you have to wear a shalwar kameez right a long shirt with baggy pants um, and that's specifically from one part of the world. Um, if you choose to do it, great. Um, but I think that that's one question I get from the Muslim community, um, depending on where you're at, because it could be you're more in a predominantly, um, uh, you know, Muslim crowd, uh, Arab crowd, or maybe a Pakistani crowd. So those those dresses are very different in contrast right. from those countries. And right. so they just assume that's how you should dress. Do you ever get the, did you ever get those questions since you embraced Islam about your dress and, and kind of making you feel like you had to dress a certain way? Um, not necessarily. I think I felt very comfortable early on wearing a bias. And um, when I obviously was married, um, because he was from Morocco, I uh, adopted the um, jobabs that had the little hat in the back. So obviously in the masjid or anytime I was at an event, they would assume I was Moroccan um, because I was wearing their attire. Um, but, you know, and I still have a couple of them that are very pretty and I like them. They're just a little heavy. And, and I like them more in the winter time because of the material. Um, but um, I really, I really enjoy the abaya. It just kind of hides everything that we're supposed to hide. And it just allows me to move very freely. But I feel very comfortable with it. Um, I know the first couple of times that I went with it to Mexico, my grandmother, um, May Allah have mercy on her. I remember one time she she kind of made a joke, you know, she's like, you know, I've always told you to wear longer skirts or I've told you to like cover this, but why did you have to go like so extreme? <laughs> why couldn't you meet me in the middle? And I was like, oh, <laughs> okay, no, it's not that. I just like this. But it got to a point where they understood that I was happy. And that's that's really what solidified everything when she asked me point blank, are you happy? Are you happy like this? And I said, I am. I am very happy. I'm content. 
We lost your sound, Sister Nahela. Your your voice went away. Check your your um, audio. I can't hear you. Yeah, see if you can fix that. And just just as I listen to your story about your ex your ex husband and your grandmother, their questions, it just makes me think that. Um, that's a general idea all of us Muslims have to get in our head that whenever somebody does something, typically it's because they choose to do it, right? right. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people assume we're doing it for somebody else. And that's kind of the opposite of what Islam teaches us. We have to do everything for the sake of Allah, not for a person. And, and that's why I think I get frustrated with those kind of questions because it's like, I chose Islam because it's so beautiful. It's, it's, it's like a common sense faith. And it's between me and Allah, and I'm doing it to please my creator, not my husband, not my friends, not the community, not the, uh, the imam. You know, I'm doing this, whatever I'm choosing to do is on my time that I'm choosing to do this, and as I'm comfortable, as I learn. And so I think that that kind of solidifies that uh, listening to like when you adopted the Moroccan folk or uh, abayas, um, and people sometimes assume like you're from Morocco or maybe because your husband's from Morocco that, oh, um, you know, that's why you dress that way or whatever. It's not because of that. It's because you liked it right. and you wanted to wear it. Right? right. And so I think that's an important point to keep in mind. Absolutely. So they're watching us from San Diego, Tijuana. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Richard. Thank you all for being here. If you guys have any stories or any questions that you want us to mention, Make sure to drop it in the comment. Uh, so today, again, we're talking about what not to ask a convert. And we're kind of just going through our experiences as far as what has been asked. And again, we, we just want to make sure that in this conversation, we're able to educate everyone uh, based on our experiences of, of what should we ask and what shouldn't we ask. And so we've done a little bit of what we shouldn't ask. And Sister Arenda gave an excellent example of how we should ask, you know, and so I think um, we'll dedicate some time to that. That way you guys get an idea of what is appropriate to ask. Instead of saying, where are you from? You would say, how are you, right? <laughs> Just basic um, getting to know the individual. And I remember there was one um, one brother that used to come to our, our, our halakas um, before uh, COVID hit. Um, and he would go around and always ask, where are you from? Where are you from? He was so fascinated to ask, where were you from? <laughs> and I remember he, 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 um, came across one brother and he, he told them exactly that. He's like, why don't you ask me? How am I? Why does, where am I from matter? <laughs> we're here. Let's get to know one another. How about asking me, how am I doing? You know, I need someone to ask me that today. And so I think yeah. that's also very important for us to remember that everybody comes from different walks of life. We're all juggling with different struggles and we're juggling, juggling with, you know, all kinds of um, trials and tests. And perhaps we're going, you know, on this roller coaster of up and downs. And so it's wonderful when you find people that actually care for your well-being. Yeah. And I think that's one, probably one of the most important questions that someone can ask a convert. How are you? Right. And because for the simple fact that you likely are very isolated, not only from um, the fact that you're learning something completely foreign to you um, and trying to implement it and getting rid of a lot of old habits and um, your friends, your colleagues at work, your dress code, your um, five times a day prank. There's just such an overwhelming load of something you're choosing to do, but it also kind of puts us in this gray space sometimes with the non-Muslims and the Muslims, because we're not quite there yet on the knowledge, but now we're different from who we used to hang out with in our family. And so I think that is probably one of the most um, pertinent questions to ask, how are you doing? And um, maybe then lead up with, uh, you know, where are you from? You know, do you live here or in terms of how, where are you from now, not like where are you from um, in the part of the world, because obviously I'm here now, right? Um, 
And so that I think is a really important way to start that conversation because you can lead into other questions, but some of the questions we get are just not asked in the proper way. And so, um, yeah, and a lot of times you're meeting someone for a brief period of time, you're not gonna explain all these, these things come in detail, you know, um, you know, your conversion story and whatnot. So it's not like a brief conversation. So I think, yeah, that's a very good point you made. Uh, how are you? Very, very good point. Yes, absolutely. I just realized that um, I was under the name of Embrace, a project of Igna. That's not my name. <laughs> my name is <laughs> 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 Um, But uh, yeah, Embrace is my middle name. <laughs> <laughs> Nahela Embrace. Um, Morales, that's okay. Um, so yeah, I think another another important question to to ask is as far as you know, do you have the the resources to learn? As like, can I help? Is there anything I can help with? And and not under the assumption that we don't have food in the refrigerator, but sometimes is a friendship that we're looking yeah. for or sisterhood more than anything, right? Even more than friendship, um, sisterhood, or even opening the doors to your home. I mean, right now we're in the middle of a pandemic and obviously that has um, stopped us from engaging with one another. But when things go back to whatever normal will be, it's important for us to feel that we belong and we're part of this community without any red tape, you know? Um, I can't help but to think of Sister Wendy's uh, poem, I'm a convert, not a convict, right? Yeah. Treat me like your sister in Islam, treat me like you would treat anyone else. And so um, not questioning my Islam goes a long way. And the way to do that and break the ice and break those barriers is by picking up the phone. And I remember when I recently moved here to Dallas, uh, one of the things that I've always really, really enjoyed is go to Juma and I miss it a lot. And I remember, I mean, I, I met a lot of wonderful sisters at the Friday prayer. And I remember one Friday prayer, I didn't go. Um, and I got a text and, and asking me if I'm okay. And I will never, ever forget that. And I'm just so diligent, always, you know, texting that sister and we text each other. We may not see each other, but she's always checking up on me. How are you? How are, how is Andrew? You know, um, especially when it's cold, you know, and, uh, the weather, she's always very, um, uh, diligent as far as what's going on in the city um, and always offering to help, to bring food. Um, when Andrew uh, got surgery this summer, he uh, she immediately like, she's like, is everything okay? You know, aside from do us, do you need anything else? And so that goes a long, long way for, for a convert, for a revert, uh, especially when they're new in the faith and, and they feel isolated. Like you say, Sister Renda, we, we sometimes feel like we don't belong, not there, not here. And so it, it becomes somewhat lonely. Wouldn't you yeah. agree? I, I do agree. And that's really a lot of the reason why some people fall away from the faith after they embrace it, or sometimes even completely leave it because of that feeling of complete isolation. And so, um, you know, that's kind of the premise of why Embrace was started, right? To help give support to each other and help educate each other and give a platform for um, being more confident, basically. Um, gives you the confidence that you know that there are some people on your side, they understand where you're coming from, they understand your thought process um, a little bit better than the born Muslims. And so, um, you know, I think every convert really wants to be a part of the mosque. They really want to be a part of the community, but a lot of the times they find walls there. And so when someone just comes up, that friendly face, I can't tell you how many times I've been to mosques all over the U.S., and I'll go to a town and first go to a mosque to do prayer and to ask people in the mosque about questions about where I'm at. And um, very few times you'll have anyone come up to even say salam alaikum to you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are a few that do, but for the most part, you're really just alone. And, and Muslims don't have that sense of, um, you know, when we see someone, we should say assalamu alaikum. 
we should uh, greet each other, you know, in general. Um, And this is part of what our faith teaches us and looking out for one another. If we're told we have to look out for our neighbors, what about the people we're within the masjid next to, praying next to? Um, I know the brothers, my sons have a little bit different experience um, that the brothers all after prayer turn around, shake hands, salam alaikum, how are you brother? you know, um, Juma Mubarak, you know, stuff like this. So the brothers are a little bit more from my understanding and feedback from my sons, they're a little bit more uh, social, sociable uh, mm-hmm. in, in the congregation and the women tend to be a little bit more segregated. So just to always keep in mind, keep in mind, be aware of the people around you, say salam to them, smile, right? It's sunnah, smile. So all these things we get taught, there's a reason for it because it helps all of the people around us, including ourselves. So just a refresher, I know, um, you know, we have a lot of, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, first and second generation Muslims or that you've been a Muslim for a while, but just a quick refresher because you said this, that that's a right of a Muslim. We have six rights upon each other and giving salams is one of them. So this is a right we have upon one another. So understand that you're not doing anyone a favor. You're actually practicing your faith. Uh, Another right that we have over one another is to visit one another when we're sick. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, angels follow you all the way home because you visited your brother, your sister in Islam. Um, We have the right to go to each other's funeral and pray for each other. Very important as well. Um, and um, we have. Um, Make I just, sure your neighbors are fed. Yes, yes. Um, and so it, it's important for us to refresh on these uh, uh, on these rights of uh, for each other towards each other uh, because we tend to forget. And yet, you know, these are rights that are being written down. You know, our little angel is writing um, if we're exercising, if we're treating each other with that compassion and that love and that mercy that we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to actually uh, give us. So very important. Um, we, we really hope that this session, um, you know, does not discourage anyone. On the contrary, that it helps you navigate uh, with the convert revert, you know, on a whole different level and understand that we are more than our revert story. We are more than just what is your story? <laughs> and well, that will come, you know, I remember one sister, literally, um, she just texted me, got my number to see my story, to, to, for me to tell, text my story. I'm like, what makes you think if I'm not going to tell it to you verbally, I'm going to write it. <laughs> I'm not really good with the uh, text. Um, so yeah, subhanAllah. Um, it, it's, it's really, really important for us to uh, look far and beyond just that convert story and to be careful yeah. what questions we're asking each other. Yeah. And the questions that you're asking, if you're going to go and ask someone a question, what can you do for them? right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, the most important because a lot of times you're taking information as opposed to helping maybe give information, not offering advice or anything, but say, you know, like I mentioned about the prayers. Oh, do you know how to pray? Well, yes, alhamdulillah, I know how to pray. But maybe there's a newer Muslim who doesn't know how to pray. So, Mm -hmm. oh, sister or brother, how are you doing since you embraced Islam? Do you have someone you're in contact with? Let me give you my number. Um, how about, um, do you need anyone to help you with the prayer? Like you said before, do you have resources to learn? Mm -hmm. Um, do you need more? I can give you information or get it for you. Um, so a lot of the times when you're going to, uh, talk with a convert initially, right? Maybe Mm -hmm. after you've built a friendship, those questions of the conversion story or more details about their life might come out as you build that little bit of friendship, right? Right. It's more, it's, it's more appropriate and more comfortable. So offering what you can do, trying to see what that person needs, basically, I think is, is important initially. Absolutely, absolutely. And so um, I blanked out there for a minute, but the other three uh, rights of a Muslim, just for those that don't know, So it's the greeting, it's the visiting one another, it's um, attending the funeral, is when somebody sneezes, you say, alhamdulillah, um, all praise be to Allah. 
um, it's um, when somebody asks you for advice, not, not, not gossip, but genuine advice, it is a right upon one another to give each other um, advice. To uh, accept one another's invitations is another right. So if somebody invites you, unless obviously you're not able to, for whatever reason, you're sick or, or what have you, then you you take a rain check, but make sure that you don't turn people down. Because I, 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 I do remember one sister, she would invite people, she was a convert and in New Jersey, and she would invite people to her house. And for some reason, nobody would ever show up. And she said, why? Because I'm a convert. And so sometimes we get in, in this, in our own mindset of, you know, is it because I'm a convert that I'm not being accepted? And so all these insecurities begin to play a huge role. And um, so that's why everything that Sister Renda just said is so important because we wanna make sure that we are welcoming one another and we are accepting one another without judgmental. And that's why Embrace, um, I think has, been such a success because however you are in your faith, wherever you're at, that's exactly how we embrace you. And I came up with that name specifically because it's all about embracing one another, embracing, um, you know, the faith, embracing the actual act of embracing one another. So um, we, we really hope that this conversation, if you have any other questions or any topics that you want us to talk about, um, I recently got a comment, um, on my personal page of someone that wants to come on the, the, the show on one of the episodes. So if you think you have something to contribute, um, this is our space. This is your space. This is your platform. Embrace is ours. And therefore, I want everybody to understand that um, you have a space here and it's always safe at Embrace. Wouldn't you say, wouldn't you agree, Sister Renda? Absolutely. And remember, you're not alone. Our favorite tag word, right? You are not alone and your journey is our journey. We are all going through it. And that's the most important thing to keep in mind. Um, nothing you're doing wrong as long as that intention is to learn. That intention is to learn and implement what you're learning. Um, and if we all do that, all Muslims, born Muslims, new Muslims, if we all follow our Islam, what Islam teaches us, we will see these, these issues dissipate and we'll see more kindness within each other and, and for each other. And um, you know, this is, this is, there's a wisdom in what Allah has prescribed for us. There's always a reason for everything. And so we just have to go back to our roots. And just like the, the converts do, we're starting from the roots, right? We're learning from the basics. And so I think it's really important for everyone to just revisit that all, all often. Even, even, you know, some of us who've been Muslim for a very long time, um, we get kind of uh, immune to the new converts feeling and maybe what we experienced when we first embraced it. So it's always good to go back to the basics. Back to the basics is, you know, can't lose with that. Absolutely, absolutely. And we're coming to an end of the hour. This one by really, really quick. <laughs> um, like always. Um, again, we want to thank you for allowing us to enter your space and trusting Embrace uh, with these weekly episodes. We hope that they're beneficial. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make each of our journeys easy and successful. Um, I mean, and today we have a couple announcements. So today we have um, the Sierra, um, uh, Sierra Rush uh, tonight at 8.30, inshallah. So if um, you haven't joined, this is something that uh, inshallah you want to join. We have a lot of fun programming, educational, where you can actually learn and get to know one another and get to know other um brothers and sisters from your area or not even from your area, alhamdulillah. Um, something funny that happened last Saturday at our sister's halakha is that there was two Illinois sisters that lived about 30 or 40 minutes away from one another and they got so excited. So you never know who Allah has you to meet on one of these spaces. So we wanna welcome everyone to join. Uh, tomorrow we have our Friday reminder. Anything else I'm missing, Sister Renda? 
Um, Saturday, we'll have our sisters virtual chat. So if you're a sister and looking for some good company and some good conversation, we meet Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 11 um, a.m. Central Standard Time. So, um, you know, like Sister Nahela said, sometimes you hop on this and it's virtual now. And I see so many converts in uh, Facebook communities that are saying they're lonely, they don't have anyone near them. Hop on one of these and start learning and start gaining some, some friendship in there. And you never know who you're going to come across. It's a very small world. Um, there's oftentimes I'll see people come on um, and then I'm like, oh my gosh, I knew her back when I lived in San Diego at this masjid. You know, she was my friend way back then, like 15, 20 years ago. So you, you'll come across things and, you know, sometimes when you focus on what you want, Allah is going to help bring that, that positive, that positive thing into your life. So definitely tune into our um, uh, programs and please make sure, share out anything that we have that you think is beneficial. You might know somebody who is a new Muslim or is a convert. Um, or share it on your networks, because there is a lot of people looking for what we, we have to offer. So we want to make sure people have some place to call uh, a comfort zone for them. Inshallah. So if you haven't liked our page, like our page, go to our YouTube channel. We're on Instagram. We're all over the place. And um, make sure that if you have any questions, inboxes, send us a message and we will be more than happy. If we don't have the answer, we have scholars that we're able to reach out to. And so with that, we want to thank you once again for joining our 28th episode of Rewrites Reality. Until next week, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.